You're watching Telecom TV from ONS North America 2019. And joining me now is Lincoln Lavoie, who is Senior Engineer, Broadcast Technologies at the University of New Hampshire's Intropability Lab. Lincoln, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Guy. Glad to be here. Um, I'd like to talk about um, what the university is doing with the lab as a service concept. Can you, can you first of all explain to me what lab as a service is? Sure, so, so lab as a service is a community resource. Um, really more than anything else, it's an opportunity for the developers, the open source users to have access to uh, resources that they might not have, right? So, so a lot of the stuff we're working on today uh, as a community with OPNFV and OpenStack and ONAP, you can't, you can't really fire those up on your laptop, as it were. They're a little bigger than that. Uh, and so Lab as a Service provides compute and resources, networking resources to those users that they can basically sign up for. It's a reservation-based system, so they're, they're basically logging in, making a reservation to get access to a resource. They have it for a set amount of time, and then it goes back into the resource pool and somebody else gets it, right? So it's, it's something that makes that available to them as being part of the LFN community. So is it physically all set up at the Interoperability Labs? Yeah, so at the, the Interop Lab we're hosting, uh, I think it's 54 servers in total that actually make this up. It's a combination of both Intel-based and ARM-based uh, systems to cover both of the architectures, and then it's obviously a, a fairly large networking setup uh, between all of them, so everything's a combination of 10 gig or 40 gig links to all the servers, so you have plenty of resources. And then one of the things that were the 2.0 version of it that is now available is the users are actually able to do a little bit more of design and provisioning of what the network looks like it between multiple servers. So if you're thinking that I've got two or three nodes that I'm provisioning and I want specific layer two networks between them so that I could do an actual uh, OpenStack deployment and, and overlays and such, you can kind of fit all that into what you're trying to design and use uh, in the process. So do um, participants need to physically go to the, the lab or can they, can they do any of this remotely? The, everything's all remote actually. So the, it's all done out through a VPN connection over the internet. So when you get your reservation, your reservation comes up, you get automatic VPN credentials sent to you, connect into your resource and then you're just working as if you were logged into a remote server. So. And how does this benefit the Linux Foundation networking? It's more than anything else, it's that community resource to basically either make it easier for an end user to try something out. So one of the neat features that we do have in the, the 2.0 version is uh, if you're brand new to OPNFV or you're brand new to kind of OpenStack, there's like a one-click button to say, give me a deployment. It's a virtual deployment, so it's all on top of one node, but it can actually run small VNFs and everything in there. Uh, to really just basically try it out. And then if you're the developer side of things, you're probably wanting to do a lot more customization. So what you're getting access to uh, is the, essentially the bare metal system, including the lights out management and everything like that. So you can do a lot of low level checking, you can do low level installs and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a pretty awesome resource as a developer to have access to. And what's the long-term plan? What, what are the strategic next steps you might see? We're always kind of looking to kind of continually evolve uh, the system. So we've got a kind of a feature list that we're looking to add in terms of uh, better support for the multi-node usage, uh, integrating closer to like the cross CI work that's being done uh, in the uh, OPNFE project and pulling that in, uh, making the system a little bit more friendly towards like ONAP. So kind of that one click button to get access to maybe some resources like that if you're kind of brand new to it and be able to see it. Again, just to, to basically try to serve the industry um, and the community at whole, but all of that comes from essentially that community input, right? So participating in the Infra project and the, the Pharos project to kind of say, this is what we need from the project. Great, well Lincoln, thanks very much indeed. Thank you.